Brianna, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be telling you guys my curly hair story basically from birth up until now at almost 23 years old just talking about all the ups and downs and everything my hair has been through and where it's at now and what my goals are for the next year and moving forward. So let's just jump straight into the video and as I'm talking about the different stages of my life and stages of my hair, I will be inserting pictures right here just so you can get a better idea of what exactly I'm talking about. And so I don't have any notes, which let's see how this works out, but basically I'm just going to be going through my phone, um, flipping through the years and pictures to kind of help keep me on track and remember everything my hair has been through. So let's get right into it. So just a bit of background about myself is that I was born with naturally curly hair that I got from my mom and my dad and basically from when I was young up until probably like 5th or 6th grade my hair was always in braids usually, a protective style just because it was easier for my mom to just do my hair once every 2 or 3 weeks put it in braids and also I played sports all the time I played soccer and track, cross country, volleyball, I was always active and moving and when you're young and playing sports you really don't have time to sit here and do your hair every day or even every week and so braids was pretty much the go-to style for me. And so if I can find any pictures of when I was like really young, like a couple years old toddler age, um, my hair was curly but it wasn't this thick and curly and so as I got older is when my hair started getting more coarse and more curly and hard to manage. Um, but even when I was younger, like two, three, four years old, my hair was usually in ponytails. I never really just like straight wore it down and if I did wear my hair down it would be like after my hair had been braided for a couple of weeks so it was kind of like an unintentional braid out um, so that my hair would be like wavy from the braids not curly like natural. So basically my entire childhood my hair was nearly almost always in braids and as I got a bit older probably like 10 years old like 4th or 5th grade 6th grade is when I transitioned from the like plait braids into cornrows because I thought that looked older or something and so for a couple of years I would either go to my mom's friend who had just moved here from Ethiopia or I would go to this African braiding shop and get my hair cornrowed and my hair was super super long because that's all I ever did was braid it. I didn't straighten it. I didn't do anything to it. And so my hair was probably like down my back. It was super long. I would get a cornrowed. People would always ask, is that your real hair? Did you get hair out and in? But it was my real hair. And so I was rocking the cornrows for a while. But as I started getting older, getting into middle school, like seventh grade is when I started noticing that like nobody else had cornrows and lots of kids at my school were white. So they had straight hair, easy to manage and I started wanting to do something different with my hair and um, I'll insert some pictures here but the first time I really really remember not liking my hair is um, the summer from 7th grade going into 8th grade when we went on our first cruise and so these pictures that I'm going to show you are really embarrassing but this is actually what my hair looked like on this cruise and so um, the cruise was a week long and I wore my hair curly and at that time I had started doing my own hair and let's be real I didn't know how to do my hair so pretty much in every picture from that cruise if we were on the beach my hair was just it was a mess, it was tangled, it was matted, I didn't know what to do with it, I tried to put it in a bun, I tried to keep it back. Um, I don't think at any point during this week long cruise I even attempted to wear my hair down because it was just so tangled and so knotted that I didn't know what to do with it. And I remember being on this cruise with a bunch of my cousins and I had one cousin who was a few months older than me and I remember going to the beach and her hair just looked perfect, it wasn't tangled, it was really easy to do and I was wondering like why is her hair so manageable but I can't even get my fingers through my hair and she told me that she got her hair relaxed and so I didn't even know what relaxer was really but I started begging my mom like can I please get my hair permed, please get it relaxed whenever we got back from the cruise and so um after a lot of begging and pleading, uh, finally after we got back from the cruise, so sometime during my 8th grade year, I think I must have been like 14 years old, 13 or 14, I got my first perm. And I remember I came out and my hair, it wasn't straight, but it was kind of like wavy, but it was super, super easy to manage. I could comb it myself, I could wash it and condition it myself, I didn't need any help, I wasn't stressed out over trying to do my hair. And so after that is when I started getting regular perms. 
in my hair I would probably get them maybe once or twice a year um, and that would pretty much do the job basically starting from high school freshman year is when you can really see my hair was starting to get damaged because uh, not only was I getting regular perms but I was also <laughs> I also discovered the flat iron and so pretty much every single day almost every single day of high school so four years as far as I can remember I would straighten my hair almost every single day even if it was already straight I would wake up in the morning before school and just get it and run it back through my hair and I wouldn't I didn't know anything about straightening my hair so I would turn it up to the highest degree probably like 400 plus and I would straighten my hair sometimes I would wash my hair get off the shower and this is so bad that my hair would still be wet and I would start straightening it and I remember that like smell and like the sizzling and like steam would go everywhere and my dad always talks about this but he says he remembers like walking by the bathroom and smelling burnt hair and he would ask me like what are you doing like you're straightening your hair again it's gonna fall out and I was like ha 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 no like my hair's not gonna fall out but Slowly and slowly my hair started getting shorter and thinner and of course the combination of getting permed and straightening it My hair was just becoming straight. I had no curl pattern um, I really honestly hated my curly hair. I didn't want to go anywhere with curly hair Look at any picture of me from high school and I probably will never be seen with curly hair at all so straightening and perming it and then I started getting into coloring it and so I can't even, honestly can't even, can't even remember how many times um, throughout high school or even throughout ever that I've colored my hair but there was a stage where I, I tried to do like blonde highlights in my hair and that looked horrible. Um, I dyed my hair black, red, tried to do it brown, honey blonde. Like I did a bunch of different experimenting with my hair throughout high school. Day I didn't know much about taking care of my hair, so I used shampoos that had sulfates. I didn't use heat protectant. I didn't know how to moisturize my hair. Just everything was pretty much a hot mess with my hair all throughout high school. And so, um, as you can see in these pictures, and so. Um, I'm not sure how many perms I got throughout high school. I would say maybe three, four, maybe five. Um, so that's pretty much what was happening with my hair throughout high school. So there are some times that I would try to wear my hair curly, but what would come out would be kind of like a combination of like a stringy, wavy mess, and it just wasn't doing what it should do. And so even when I tried to embrace my curls, my hair was just so terribly damaged that I would just ultimately end up straightening it because it was just easier for me to deal with and easier to look at. So there's a, yeah, there's a few times where I tried to wear my hair curly and as you can see it was just so 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 terribly damaged and what's sad is that I didn't even really realize how damaged it was. I had kind of forgotten what my natural hair looked like and even when I was younger I always had it in braids so I never really knew like exactly what my natural hair texture was and so it got to the point where I just thought like this is just how my hair is now like I just this is my hair so I pretty much just accepted the fact that it was damaged and that's how it was always going to be. So pretty much all throughout high school my hair was kind of like shoulder length that never really got any longer and from when I was growing up I always had super super long hair all the way down my back people always asking is it real is it real and so I also kind of got used to my hair just being that length and I really kind of thought like this is as far as my hair can grow it's never going to get past that so I also just accepted that this is just how my hair is. So basically that continued all throughout high school and um, I think either the, the summer before my senior year of high school we went on another cruise and this time I actually did wear my hair curly the entire time so I did not bring a flat iron it was another week long cruise but as you can see in these pictures compared to the first cruise which was about four or five years earlier my hair was completely damaged. It was thin, it was stringy, it was pretty much like wavy, but this was probably the first time that I went an entire week without straightening my hair, and because it had been permed and gone through so much, I could actually comb it, but my hair just wasn't looking healthy, it wasn't full, it didn't look curly, but this was kind of like a, a small breakthrough because I did go an entire week wearing my hair curly in public. So throughout my senior year of high school there were a few times that I did wear my hair curly and it wasn't looking too bad but it still was very very damaged and stringy but there was there was a little bit of curl coming back. I could see that my hair was starting to kind of come back but it was still 
very damaged and I still definitely was not taking care of it at all. Okay, wait, actually, here it is. So I remember spring break of 2014, senior year, right before that is when I got my very last perm. So 2014 is the last time that I got a perm in my hair and after that is when I just stopped doing it but I did continue straightening it on a weekly, daily basis after that. So fast forward to the fall of 2014, I went off to college and this was really the first time that I discovered like the natural hair community. I remember going to college and going to different events and seeing girls with huge, big, curly, kinky hair, seeing girls with braids and all these different protective styles. And I started getting into YouTube and discovering um, the natural hair community. And so a combination of trying to embrace my curls and also just being too lazy, like let's be real, it takes so much time and effort into straightening your hair and also when you're in college and you're a freshman there's just so much going on i was also an, an athlete so i spent so much time working out going to class that i really didn't have time to do my hair and so um by a combination of that i started wearing my hair curly and um as time went on it started growing it started coming back but of course you can't really repair hair that's been so 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 damaged by straightening and perming and so as the months went on it was kind of like my roots were coming in super curly like this like my natural hair but as you went down my hair it went from like wavy to just completely straight and stringy and so I did straighten my hair a few times throughout my freshman year but not nearly as much as I used to and I kind of started liking my curly hair because I could sweat, I could go swimming, I could do different things and not have to worry about, oh my gosh, my roots are sweating out. And so I tried to start embracing my hair, but as time went on um, and I started discovering different YouTubers, I think some of the first people I started watching were Jasmine Brown and Lissetti, and I just really started learning more about how to take care of my hair. Um, I discovered this thing called the Big Chop. So I had never really gotten a huge haircut before um, throughout the years I would kind of like trim it myself but I started to realize that if I wanted to wear my hair curly it needed to be healthy and that some of my ends were not my ends most of my hair was just so far gone that like it would never come back and no amount of care would ever bring that hair back and so in the spring of 2015 probably around March I took the chance and I gave myself a haircut. Not the big chop, just a haircut. So I cut off a couple of inches and my hair was looking better, starting to get more curly, but a few weeks went by and I realized that I still had a lot of damaged ends. And so it was right after Easter, April 2015, where one night I just looked at my hair and thought like, I need to do it, I need to cut it off and just start over. It's gonna come back so much better and healthier. And so in my dorm, I went to the mirror, took some scissors, and I just started going ham. I started cutting my hair, and after I was done, I looked in the mirror, and I was like, I don't have any hair. From having super long hair most of my childhood, and at least having shorter length hair all throughout my teenage years, now my hair was like probably you can see my hair is super super short maybe an inch or two off of my head if i pulled it out probably like two or three inches but this was the shortest i had ever ever had my hair and it was crazy like i didn't at first i immediately it was like what did i just do i regret this i wish i didn't cut my hair off but as days went by i started seeing how curly my hair was and like i had never seen my hair like that since i was a kid and so I did the big chop and after that I started doing more research looking at YouTube videos about different ways to take care of your hair I learned about deep conditioning I started getting sulfate free shampoos I discovered Shea Moisture and these different brands and so spring of 2015 is really when all the changes were made and I started my natural hair journey basically so pretty much after that I was doing great, I was taking care of my hair, I was embracing my curls, I was feeling good, my hair was growing, coming in super healthy, and you know, sometimes you get bored and you want to change up your hair, so I did straighten my hair a few times that year, but it was pretty healthy, I was very careful, I discovered what heat protectant was, and I treated my hair as careful as I could that so that I didn't damage it, and so I did straighten my hair a few times. I dyed it black, I did a few things like that, but nothing too crazy, and I stayed away from perms. 
So in January of 2016, I got bored with my hair and I made the mistake of going to a hairstylist who was still in training. I worked with her at a restaurant and she was like, hey, we're having a deal, $15 hair color, come in. So I went in and I wanted an ombre. Ombre was really popular then. I kind of wanted something to fade into blonde. Um, long story short, my hair got ruined. It completely, completely died. She left the bleach on too long. Just everything went wrong. And basically immediately after I got home and I was like, my hair is ruined. I dyed my hair black and I cut off probably like inches, like at least four or five inches. And it was a huge setback, a huge disappointment that kind of really took me back in my curly hair journey. But it was a lesson well learned that I had. So after that huge color mistake in January, I really, really took good, great care of my hair throughout the year. And then I discovered something on YouTube called Diva Cut. So I found a local hairstylist and I went in for a, a trim. A trim. I repeat, a trim. But what I came out with was a basically another big chop and so I don't I honestly don't think I have any pictures of right after because I went home after that appointment first of all it cost a hundred dollars so I spent a huge amount of money I was still in college I was broke didn't have a job I was doing internships unpaid probably and I spent a hundred dollars on the Steva cut I went home looked in the mirror and I was crying 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 because basically it was a big chop and I was so upset that I don't think I have any pictures right after, but let's just say that my hair was so short it couldn't fit in the one, it couldn't fit in the pineapple, it couldn't fit in the ponytail. And so I remember for several months, probably not months, several weeks after that my hair was so short that all I would, the hairstyle I would always do is just take it and put it in two buns, like two little buns because it was too short to do anything else. And so that was another huge, huge setback and I have not gotten a diva cut since then. Now my experience isn't the same as everybody else's but that was the moment where I decided like I'm not letting anybody else cut my hair. So since then I've been doing my own trims, my, my own trims, my own haircuts and I just, I can't trust anybody with scissors because you go in for a trim and you come out with a big chop. So, another setback, but you know, it's all good. I kept going. So after that, I just did the same thing, took care of my hair, um, straightened it a few times, dyed it a few times, same thing, same thing. So my hair was doing pretty great. It was starting to go back, getting fuller, same story. And so we get to the end of 2016 and I straighten my hair for New Year's and I'm starting to like write down my goals um, for 2017 and I make the goal to not straighten my hair for an entire year. So for me, for somebody who religiously spent every single day of, for several years straightening my hair like it was like a physical addiction, setting the goal to not straighten my hair for one entire year, 365 days, was something that was so big and at the time seemed so unachievable. But you know what? I just, I wrote it down and made that a goal. So we're going to 2017. So 2017 was a great year for my hair and I didn't really do much to it. I kind of just let it do its own thing. I still dyed it. I don't know why I dyed my hair so much, but I love to dye it jet black and sometimes I would try red. And so I actually ended up going the entire year without straightening my hair. And I remember at the end of 2017, I posted this thing on, I made a little collage that I took down, but I posted this collage on Instagram of basically throughout the year of me wearing my hair curly and that was something so amazing to me that I actually made it a whole entire year without straightening my hair. So much so that I, I was away for college but I remember I went home and just left my straightener there because I was like, I don't need it anymore, I'm not straightening my hair. And so 2017, pretty simple, um, my hair was doing really great flourishing, getting longer, and I did not straighten it. So throughout 2018, pretty much my hair was growing and doing great. I have not straightened my hair the entire year. 
I have dyed it a lot and that's what I'm going to get to now. So first of all, on December 31st of this year will make two whole years since I straightened my hair. Now, am I saying that you have to not straighten your hair to have healthy hair? Nope. But for me, I kind of like needed that break and needed to know that I could go that long without straightening my hair. And so I actually have been thinking about straightening my hair soon and I may do that sometime around Christmas or maybe next year. But I definitely do want to start straightening my hair again, but maybe only once or twice a year, just to limit the heat. So basically this entire year, my hair has been doing great. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I got bored again and I ended up dyeing my hair. And so I'll insert some pictures here, but I dyed my hair red with the L'Oreal High Color Magenta Color and 30 Volume Developer. And I wanted to make a video about that, but I honestly didn't know how it would turn out. It was super, super messy. And so I didn't want to like throw in the camera and recording because I honestly did not know how it would turn out. So basically where my hair is at now is that I dyed it red and the roots and the ends came out super super red and it was cool, I loved it, it was red in the sunlight, it looked amazing, it just looked super super red. Um, but it's been a few weeks and I've been washing my hair a lot to kind of fade it out and so it's kind of like at a ready brown right now. But basically that's my hair journey this is where we're at now moving forward i think i'm going to like try to leave my hair alone as far as coloring goes and just kind of the lighting right now isn't great but just kind of like let my hair fade out and go back to my natural color um the length so today is december 7th 2018 and it's hard to see but basically like the longest parts of my hair are down here so my hair is pretty healthy right now it's honestly um been a little bit felt a little less full and the ends are probably damaged from dying it so much and so moving forward my goals for next year and just in general are to really really focus on the health of my hair and limit um limit too much washing too much over manipulation and also dyeing i don't know why i love to dye my hair but um moving forward i think i kind of just want to really embrace my natural hair color which is just a dark brown or if i do dye my hair i might do black a few times because black isn't as harsh as trying to go lighter um but that's pretty much it and also length my goal is to really really grow my hair out make it fuller and bigger next year and um, that is pretty much my hair journey. So that is my curly hair journey. Thanks guys so much for watching and I do plan on posting more consistent content so please subscribe if you aren't already and be on the lookout for more videos. If you want to see more of my curly hair pictures, follow me on Instagram. I'll leave my tag somewhere around here and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye y'all.